Line. Today we're bringing you our top 10 in 10 minutes best games of 2020 that I didn't get to play but really wanted to. So this is basically just a list of, you know, I, I went down my wish list seeing what was on there that was published in 2020 and then I ranked them all in, you know, using the, the pub meeple ranking engine that I always use and the top 10 that was left there for what I wanted to play. That's what we've got right here. Now, before we get into this list, I want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a fantastic website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. They have a great system for uh, for you to use to sell games to them. Makes it very easy for you to get games off your hands. They also have a great stock of games if you're looking to get some new ones in. Uh, Alex over there is very, very savvy with figuring out what games people are going to be wanting from Kickstarter and then non-Kickstarter games as well and making sure to have those hot games on hand so you pretty pretty sure you'll be able to find exactly what you're looking for over there. They also have a trade system where you can use your Board Game Geek account to uh, if you've set up a trade list on Board Game Geek, what you want in trade, what you have for trade, then you can go over to Board Game Co. and they uh, will you put in your board game geek username and they will look at that trade list, compare it to their stock and build a custom trade list just for you right there on their website. Really cool feature. Go, sh go check that out. If you do check it out, be sure to click on the link in the description below. So they know I sent you over there. Board game co makes it easy to buy, sell and trade your way into a better collection. Okay. Without anything else, let's get right into this list. 10 minutes starts right now now okay first off at number 10 we have one small step now this is a technically two to four player game looks like it plays best at two players uh this designer james dumont gunter eckert and uh james scotch i'm sure just butchered all y'all's names it's coming from academy games now academy games makes some really good stuff this one one small step it's about the moon landing uh but you're not just playing from the american side you uh it's the united states and the Soviet Union competing to get to the moon first. I think that's why it probably is considered to play best at two players because really there's just two sides there. If you do four players or, or three players, then you're going to be splitting up one of those two sides and people are going to be kind of taking just portions of the side. Uh, the description here on Board Game Geek: score victory points by building cards you drafted or by successfully launching missions into space. Every successful launch you have upgrades one of the board actions not only for your team, but also your opponents successfully launched enough manned missions to achieve the first manned moon landing before your rivals gaining you bonus victory points and ending the game that's one small step very excited about that one now next up we have chronicles of crime 1400 now what i'm really that's my kids stuff over there y'all sorry about that what i'm really excited about with chronicles of crime 1400 is that it's going to have a follow-up this year 1900 and then 2400 2400 is the one i'm really excited about but 1400 came out this past year i haven't played any of the chronicles of crime yet if you don't if you're not aware you are essentially a detective or whatever a detective equivalent is in 1400 and you uh, are actually using an app so it's an app driven game where you are using this app to discover clues figure out you know maybe I think you do interviews of witnesses and stuff like that suspects and you're going through and trying to figure out what's going on now how that all shakes out in the year 1400 I'm very curious about the description here we've got during your investigation you can also count on your family members to share their knowledge with you your uncle who's a monk that has a wealth of knowledge your sister is a merchant knows just about everything uh, finally your faithful dog is always willing to trace a suspect for you so all kinds of cool interactions there that you might not be able to get without using an app very excited for Chronicles of Crime 1400. Now, the Search for Planet X is the next one on the list. This is my number eight. Search for Planet X um, is a uh, deduction game, basically, but set in outer space. You and the other players are researching, trying to figure out where this hidden planet is. It's not enough just to figure out the planet. You have to figure out the stuff on either side of the planet, too. And it says here in the description that you're actually... Um, 
publishing your theories, like there's a, a public publication um, mechanism in the game somehow, publishing your theories, which help you score points. Uh, so I believe theoretically you could win the game without actually finding Planet X if you've scored enough points along the way based on what you're doing. This, this game has an amazing looking table presence. I love the idea of a deduction game set in a uh, interstellar style setting. So that is, uh, like I said, Search for Planet X. Okay, number, what is it, seven? is Project L. Project L is uh, a, a polyomino game, but this is the polyomino game, the first one I've seen where the, the pieces really genuinely look like Tetris pieces. Got this kind of same color scheme as Tetris, all that kind of stuff. It is, um, I, basically you are trying to complete these different puzzles, starting with, you have two basic pieces, I guess you get to upgrade your pieces as you play throughout the game, and then eventually, you know, you're scoring points along the way, and you know you're trying to outsmart your opponents, complete complete more puzzles, um, and it looks like that puzzles get more and more difficult as you're going along, and you're just trying to uh, build an engine to help you complete those puzzles. That is Project L. Now next one, this one is pretty cool. This is Four Against the Great Old Ones, and this is my number six. Four Against the Great Old Ones is from. Uh, Ganesha Games, which I've never heard of before, and this is built on the Four Against the Darkness system. Also, I've never played that, but I've heard wonderful things about it. It's a, a pen and paper game, really, um, but it can be played solo or co-op, and this one, you are, uh, looks like you're, you're really using, you have dice-based combat, you're going up against Cthulhu-style monsters, so it takes place in the 30s. I, 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 I don't know much about this one because it is story driven. And so with story driven games, you know, I'm trying to uh, make sure I don't dive too deep in because I don't want to spoil it. But the fact that it's pen and paper, also dice rolling, and then it has a Cthulhu in there, I'm all about that. Like that, that is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, this seems like the type of game that probably you could take easily take with you when you go on trips and stuff. That's four against the great old ones. Now, My City is next up, number five. My City is a legacy city building game. This is very exciting. Uh, you have your own you know, plot of land, basically, that you're going to start building your city on. And now, what I thought when I first heard about this was that it was actually like you're building a modern city. Well, turns out from reading this description that you end up there but you start in the uh, pre-industrial age. So that is really, really cool. And uh, there's 24 episodes in this game, so a fairly lengthy campaign. And again, it's legacy, so you are making these permanent changes. I love legacy games, they, they are always thrilling. Uh, this one, it looks like it plays well at uh, two players, which is kind of, my wife and I are the primary, we are each other's game group at this point with everything that's going on, the pandemic, all that stuff. So really excited about My City, another legacy game to get into. I believe that actually only be my fourth legacy game that I've played. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe fifth. Uh, so next up is Dwellings of Eldervel. Now I know very little about this game other than it is on everybody's top 10 for the year. Like just about everybody loves it. And that in itself is enough to get me excited. Then a couple of the game mechanics here that we're talking about. It's worker placement, area control, engine building, and unique worker units. That one I really like a lot. Where uh, if, if that is what I think it is, that means that your workers, each individual, well, not each individual, but different workers can do different things instead of it just being a generic worker. That's a really, really cool feature. Now, on top of that, if you, Google this game, the you'll immediately be blown away by its table presence. Gorgeous, gorgeous game on the table. Dwellings of Elderville. Now, next up, number three, we have Beyond the Sun, which I've heard people describe as Tech Tree the game. Apparently, building your or, or expanding your tech tree is like the primary thing in this game, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you are uh, you take actions, I'm reading from the description here on Board Game Geek, take actions, uh, as players take actions, they research new technologies that come in four levels. Each technology is either scientific, economic, military, or commercial, and higher level technologies must match one of the types of tech that lead to it, thus players create their own technology tree in each game. And 
so that by itself is really cool. Tech trees are always something I love fiddling with in video games. You know, more and more you see it in board games as well. Um, you know, leveling up, that sort of thing. And then the board itself is, or the, the general table presence of this one is another one that's really cool. So many dice in this game. Really cool looking dice, custom dice. Beyond the Sun is my number three. Number two is Forgotten Waters from the Reborn Plaid Hat games. Uh, I, I cannot stress enough how excited I was to learn that Colby had uh, had freed Plaid Hat. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but they they have regained their independence. They have been uh, you know the company had been sold to I think Z Man first, and then Z Man got bought by um, you know the big guy, and now Plaid Hat is. Free again, Forgotten Waters is their first offering since they became an independent company once again. And it looks now what's interesting about this is it says three to seven players. That's the official player count. And yet the Board Game Geek community says one to seven is recommended. That's really, really interesting to me. I'm wondering how that works. I definitely need to try this game. I believe this is one of the games that falls under the Crossroad banner which Dead of Winter was the first one of those. And I think there was one other that came out since then. Forgotten Waters, it's a pirate game, by the way. I know I kind of talked more about Plaid Hat than the game itself. Check it out. Really, really cool artwork in this. And finally, my number one, I'm running out of time, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Now, Pandemic Legacy Season 1 was one of the first, might be the only campaign game I managed to get my wife to play all the way through. She's not a big fan of campaigns, but that campaign sucked her in. She really liked it a lot. Had not played season two, I think I might go straight to season zero. Season zero's theme, it's a Cold War theme. Uh, you, you are, uh, from what I understand, you're the Americans and, and the Soviet Union, you believe, has unleashed this biological weapon into the United States and you're trying to figure out, or maybe just in the world somewhere, trying to figure out what's going on with that. And it has a lot of the pandemic kind of um, what you would expect from a pandemic game, but from what I understand, it then takes hard right turn and it really starts changing things up on you and becomes an entirely different game. And most people that I've heard talking about this game say that it is, you know, pandemic season one, pandemic season one, and then season two was pretty different from season one. And season zero, again, is very different from either of those two. So it's worth having all three of those. Theoretically, again, haven't played season two, but season zero, I'm very, very excited about. And that is my number one best game of 2020 that I have not played, but really wanted to. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I do want to mention we have a contest going on. You might have seen the card for it pop up on the top of the screen here at the beginning of the video. I have a contest going on, giving away six free games. What games are they? I'll never tell. Only one person will find out. Well, one person will find out and they might tell some other people and they might find out. Whoever wins these, you're the one that'll find out. But there are six games I'm giving away. This is my second annual purge where I get rid of the 30% of the games that I have not played in the past year. 10% of those, of those games I give away here on the channel. So the rest I'll be trading or selling or giving to somebody here, you know, around my house. So... If you want to get in on that, be sure to click on, again, up in the cards here, you can find the video for that. That will explain exactly how to get in on that contest. And yeah, until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.